Okay, let's see what we can find around here. A very large sample of andesite native copper. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. I can see it right there. Tell me something I don't know. Well, now you're just trolling me. Hey folks, welcome back. So, this is where the uh, one of my Garnierite deposits was. The first one I found early on. If we have a look at the map. we So it's right here on my starting island, or landmass as it were. Uh, this guy right here. And as you can see, it's right next to this copper mine. The Kenide among you. Long-term viewers among you. Uh, might recognize this area here. You can see where the mine is there. <clears throat> and so I've done the usual thing. And I've marked where all the uh, nuggets were on the ground. And they're all over the place here. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing. Same sort of thing that I did with the gold mine is since uh, it, there were nuggets coming all the way right out here to this kind of little bit of a cliff face here, I'll take advantage of that and start digging down here and just save myself a bit of digging. And uh, so I'll bring you in once I get down far enough that I've detected the Garnierite, and then we'll start uh, start seeing uh, how to set up with the with the support beams. Okay, I'll bring you back then. Well, I uh, actually ran directly into the, as it says here, Gabro Garnierite. Um, I detected, started detecting the Garnierite fairly high up, but I know from, from well, from past experience, but also you know from the wiki that Garnierite only appears in Gabro, and this is all andesite here. So I knew I had to keep digging down until I reached Gabro at any rate. But as soon as like, I'm not sure where it is, but as soon as we got to the Gabbro, uh, I started getting the uh, Garnierite, so that was pretty good. No time wasted. I don't happen to remember how high the beams go. I think they just go three, All right? One, two, three, yep. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna dig out to either side here to a height of three and just for now to keep things from collapsing in while I'm working on them I will throw one of my logs in there so this is going to be a hybrid mining setup here okay and again throw a log in there so I don't get a collapse when I'm doing these two okay take my logs out And now I can put in the bare minimum for the support beams. Okay, so that should now allow me to work around here. Eventually I want to widen this out, right? Like this is too narrow a space to work in, but it gives me something to start with. So let's see what we can do here. So in theory... <laughs> I'm already full up with crap in my inventory. Oh, it's Rich Garnierite. I'm doing pretty good on the uh, ore quality these days. Oh, I should throw a torch down here so we can see what the hell we're doing. So, so far, not so good. Um, I can't remember how far these go. <coughs> should look that up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I can see the texture difference here. This is the Garnier right here. Or Garnier, the Gabbro here. Okay. And I think that's the max length. I think it's five. Oh, I don't have enough beams. Uh, well, that's why I brought more wood. And I brought my saw as well. Uh, hopefully we can mix different types of wood here. Uh, 
Um, doo, 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 I don't need the dirt. Okay, so now that should then allow me to dig out this whole face here. And I have to admit this is going pretty smoothly. There's more Garnier, right? That's what I'm looking for. Now the one thing I have to be careful about is that I don't dig beyond the range of these beams, right? Okay, so the range is four for from the horizontal beams. The vertical beams don't provide any support at all. So one, two, three, so I can dig one more. It's it's four not including the uh, uh, where the horizontal beam itself is. So so I can dig one more layer out. With impunity. Well, this keeps working the way it is. I'm going to have to uh, eat my words that this is actually a pretty, uh, pretty easy way of doing it. Yeah, if you're in a nice enclosed space and there's no gaps, like we had with the cave, the cave at the gold mine. Right, so then I just go and lay down that and that and if I want to be able to dig in that direction in that direction then I'm going to need some vertical some horizontal support rather on that side as well and if I want to continue digging in that direction I need horizontal on that support so that's not bad then like so basically one two three four so every four yeah, every four blocks, then I have to set up another frame like this. That's not too bad. Uh, the other nice thing is it's it's fairly open, right? You can see what's going on. Unlike my method where, you know, you're... Well, I tend to follow the vein, right? And so I end up sneaking my way through the deposit. Here we go. Let's put another torch down. Uh, let's not go sideways until we're done. Let's basically, let's pick a direction and keep to it. Okay, well, this is looking pretty pretty, pretty good. So, so really what it was is when I tried doing it in the gold mine, it was just because it was that big cavern. <clears throat> and these support beams won't do squat in that situation. So you really have to go over to my sort of approach in that situation where you use some nice gravity defying blocks to cap off all the open open overhanging rock okay well i will continue this way and uh and continue gathering up as much garnierite as i figure i want to haul back and if there's a cave-in i'll show it to you <laughs> But otherwise, you've seen me mine before, so there's no point in watching me do more of it. So, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so here's an interesting situation. So, <clears throat> I've dug out as usual, and I've got my cross beam here. Now, according to Wiki, uh, the horizontal beams will support one block above. So, the layer immediately on top of the beams is supported. But if I dig this out, this ore, and you'll see there's some more up there now, that means it won't be supporting the block immediately above it. So what I should do in that case is fill that in. Now you can see actually there's some more Garnierite up there and even more. Okay, well, so I'll have to revisit that. But, uh, so I'm not sure how to go about extending up words without getting a cave in but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I've got plenty of Garnier air right down on this level so I'll just keep going as I'm going now bring you back in later well I have to say I am impressed I mined out all of this 
and plus that's where I came in so all the way up to here and over here and didn't get a single cave in so you know I'm not above admitting when I'm wrong which is good given how often I'm wrong um, so a few notes I guess is this looks to be a really really good way of doing things of doing the mining when you have basically complete control over the roof of the mined area uh, so if you can ensure that it's like perfectly smooth or if there's only minor deviations where you can slap in some solid blocks to even it out. Um, if you're in an area where it's really rough like we were in that cave as rough ceiling, this method is not going to do you any good at all. You're going to have to cap it off the way I do in my normal, uh, well, what used to be my normal mining because this is going to become probably more normal. Because when I think about it in the what have I done? Maybe eight, nine mines now, and only one of them has broken out into a cave like that. So, um, so that my capping method should be the exception, not the rule. Uh, another thing is that, uh, you can't really dig up safely. It seems to me, according to the description of how the beams work in the wiki, you should be able to, right? Like it says it supports the block, um, immediately above the beam, the horizontal beam, right? Uh, so that means I can safely take that out without getting a, uh, without anything falling in. And then I can put a solid block in there to support and then continue along like that. And then now doing it above these joints here is a little tricky because you have to get rid of cross members. So let's get rid of that cross member there. And now we can put the cross member back. And we'll have to do the same thing here. Get rid of the cross member. And I don't really need to do that yet. Okay, so, and now that I've got a whole row there, then I can come and take out my logs. And in theory, I can throw some more beams up there. I don't think I can do, oh, I can do a cross. Okay, great. And now I got support. So that's great. And that works really well, except when I was doing it, I would still sometimes uh, get collapses when I'm digging out this row here, even though every, all the other ones are supported by wooden blocks or smooth stone blocks or whatever it is I chose to put in there. So. I don't know if it's a bug or, or what it is, but it seems like you can still get some cave-ins doing this approach. But it look, but you know, from what we've just done here now, it does seem like it's pretty solid approach. The problem is that only gets you up one block, right? So, you know, you could, I guess. Okay, that's what you'd have to do is, so you get up one block here and then you do the same thing over here to get up a block. And now you can do the crosswise one and clear out crosswise ones, clear out the area in between and then repeat, lift everything up one block. So it's going to be kind of tedious, but it, it would work. Now, most of the time, if you're actually mining for ore, the deposits are usually so big that you don't need to go after every last scrap of ore. So it's, it's, it's often not necessary to dig up, but, but what does happen and this happened to me several times is I don't end up coming in near the top of an ore body, but somewhere in the middle, in which case a lot of the ore that I'm looking for is up top. So I'm not really sure what you're going to do in that case is maybe that is what you have to do is you have to do this very, very careful incremental creep upward. Um, and once you get up to another level, like another three, so you get another stack up there, then you should be able, I guess, to start working along normally again. So that wouldn't be too bad. The other thing to note is I'm using way more beams here than I have to. If you think about it, uh, these cross beams here will support vertically all the way over to here. And these cross beams here, horizontal beams, will support all the way over to here. So I don't really need these ones here at all. 
And in fact, I don't need those ones or those ones or these uprights either. So I could get away with just... Uh, okay, just for demonstration purposes, I'll do this even though it makes me nervous. <laughs> so I could just have like a U like this here and then U like this here. Now, in order to dig it out safely from the start, I do need the middle U, like one, two, three, four, the one that would go here, right? Actually, let me pick up. I've got two different types of wood here, and I haven't got enough slots to carry both of them. So, um, so I would still need this one, two, three, four. One, two, three. I would still need this intermediate U while I'm digging, but once I've got this one in place, I could come back and take that out. Now, the downside to that is that if I then start trying to dig out in this direction and I don't have the vertical going along here, uh, then I will uh, run out of range of, like these cross beams here aren't going to support all that far in that direction, right? Um, so I have to remember if I'm only putting up these U's across, say going this direction, a U here, and then a little while later U here. If I then decide I want to like dig out in here, I'm going to have to put in some extra supporting infrastructure, uh, when I go to start digging in that direction. <clears throat> so for me, for someone like me, who's like extremely absent minded, it's better just to be a little wasteful with the beams and put them all in so that if I do decide, oh, I want to start digging out here, I don't have to suddenly remember, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I need to go and modify things. The structure's in place, and it's a very regular pattern. So, so yeah, so I'm sold, yeah, guys. I will, I will be using the beams from now on when, like I say, when I'm in an area where I can ensure a, a, a pretty flat ceiling. But I'm loaded up on Garnier, right? So it's time to head back and actually start doing some metalworking. I'll see you back at the house. Okay, well, there's the stash. Got to show the stash off. I mean, you know, if you're going to do things to it, what's the point in doing things to excess if you don't revel in it? <laughs> the other thing, of course, is I like having lots of windows in my buildings, in my homes when I build them. But I also like lots of chests. And as you can see, those things start to conflict with each other. I am really glad, though, that you know, Minecraft eventually fixed up the inability to have chests beside chests. So you can do it. Um, I'm not sure how much of this is TFC versus regular Minecraft, but I think it's mostly regular Minecraft. But um, they need to be of different types of wood. But as long as they're different types of wood, then you can put them immediately adjacent to each other, which is kind of cool. That means you can pack the chests in a lot better than it used to be the case. Anyway, so we got our nickel and our gold and our silver. So... Um, we want to make black steel, and for that, as I think I've mentioned a couple times already, we need black bronze. So to do that, we're going to want to place the crucible on the forge. Uh, well, i got a fair bit of charcoal, but let's bring some more out. Should have put the uh, charcoal on the forge first, but ah, there we go. I found the little spot. And get that going, heating up. All right, now into the crucible. I've gone and worked this out ahead of time. <laughs> Hopefully I got it right. Um, so for black bronze, we need uh, 50 to 70 percent copper, 10 to 25 percent silver, and 10 to 25 percent gold. And the easiest way of not having too much calculation here is just to make it 50 percent copper and 25 of the other two. So it's it's uh, for every two copper. We need one of the other. Okay. What, I can only put in one? Oh, this is going to be a problem. I can't put stacks in here? Oh, that's really f annoying. Okay, that's going to make things a little more difficult on me here. Alright, so it works out okay for the copper and the silver, I guess. Because uh, each copper ingot has is a hundred units of copper, 
um, and each of the silver ore has 25. So two copper ingots gives me 200, four silver gives me 100. But it's not going to work out that easily for the rich gold. Because two of those gives me 70. I'm going to wait for this to melt. Um, I want to see if it will let me accumulate, like if I can just keep adding afterwards. And if that's okay, if that works, then it's fine. I can just keep throwing more stuff in here. So we'll wait till this stuff gets up to the temperature where it melts. While we're waiting for that, I should talk about why I'm even bothering to do this. I mean, you look at all the effort it takes to do the increasingly higher tier metals. Um, like for steel, we had to build the blast furnace, which took a ton of time and effort to make up all those uh, wrought iron sheets for it. Not to mention, you know, going and hunting down the, the kaolinite and the graphite and grinding it up and doing all sorts of stuff. And she's going beyond wrought iron is an awful lot of work. And kind of like, why bother doing it? Well, I'm making videos here, so obviously that's one reason is I'm making the video to kind of demonstrate the stuff and show it. Um, but even when I'm just playing on my own, unknown ally, Loy, it shows so far. Okay, so we will put in more copper, put in more gold, a couple more silver and see what happens. Um, but even when I'm just playing on my own, by myself, I still like to get up to uh, red steel at the very least. I don't, the, the two top tier metals are red steel and blue steel. They're kind of at the same level. And the one that I care about is red steel. And that's because a red steel bucket, you can pick up source water blocks, right? Um, a blue steel bucket will let you, let you pick up lava, source lava blocks, or I guess just pick up lava at all. Um, and I'm not so interested in that. That obviously has its uses, but <clears throat> for, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff around the farm, doesn't matter. But picking up source water blocks means, for example, here where I somehow accidentally borked my uh, eternal water supply, I'd be able to bring in some source water blocks and fix that up, right? And, you know, when I'm working around the building, around my building sometimes in the water and that, again, I'll accidentally destroy a source water block and now I've got continual running water. And just the sound of the running water can be annoying. And so again, if I can pick up source water blocks, then that'll allow me to fix those up as well. And I guess the big overarching one is, uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to build infrastructure. Uh, what are we doing here? Put some more gold in. And uh, one of the bits of infrastructure is I like to find places on the map. Let's see if I can find one here. I remember I ran into one somewhere before. And yeah, here's an example over here is I like to find places on the map where there's just a little bit of land separating two bodies of water. And so I can put a little channel in there. So for example, there's this whole river network in here that I would be able to access from the ocean that I'm on. If I was just able to like to dig a channel through here and channel through here for my boat. And obviously I can get out and walk it, but it's nice if I could just sail the whole thing, right? And okay, I can go ahead and dig the channel, but it's too long, like, it won't form source blocks and so this challenge ends up being too long to actually you know form st uh, stable still water i'd get water flowing in and then a dry patch and then water flowing in from the other direction on the other side so that's that's the other big reason is if i can move water blocks and i can build my little uh my little canals so that's why i'm doing it or so that's why i do it even when i'm not making videos on it Ah, okay, got room for some more silver. So I think this is going to work out. I just have to keep throwing stuff in. Would have been nicer if this took stacks, but, you know, it's TFC. You got to work. <laughs> you got to work to get your stuff in TFC. But that would be, see, that's that would be another quality of life improvement. Is just, just allow stacks to go in here. Um... Just get rid of the tedious. I, I, you know, I don't mind the fact that I have to build a blast furnace and that. It's just when it gets so the the stuff you have to do, like sitting there and grinding, and grinding, and grinding your uh, your graphite and your kaolinite up, and uh, and then sitting in a forge forever making the 
God knows how many different steel plates and double ingots and quadruple ingots. No, no, there's no quadruple ingots. Double sheets. <clears throat> All right, so um, I'll probably just quickly time lapse this until everything's melted down, and then we can look at drawing out the. Uh, hopefully, we will have our black uh, black bronze here, and then we'll be able to work on drawing it out. Ran into a little wrinkle there as I wasn't watching the uh, charcoal supply in the forge underneath and it ran out. And my crucible started to cool off, but there it goes. Ah, and see, we have black bronze. And so that it's nice that they actually show you the percentages here. So you can see 50% copper, 25 gold, 25 silver. All right. Um, let's uh, just make some room here for some ingot molds. So what did I have? I had six, so I should end up with 12, right? And if I'm going to end up with 12, I'm not going to have enough room. So let's get some stuff out of here. Let's make sure it doesn't get cold on, go cold on me. Come on. Yeah, we're still fine there. For my last two ingots of black bronze. Okay, great. Um, now the next thing we need to do is to make black steel, we have to make up an alloy containing steel and nickel and black bronze. And the percentages there are 50 to 70% steel, 15 to 25% nickel, and 15 to 25% black bronze. So again, the simplest way of doing that there is for every two steel, I have one nickel and one black bronze. Yeah. So 50% steel and 25% the other two. But before I do that, well, let me do all my calculations and get myself sore out first and I'll be back. Okay, so I've worked out what I want to do. I'm going to try and make 16 ingots of black steel. That's a nice round number when you're working in things of 25%. Um, and so that will give me the 14 I need to make the anvil and leave me two more if I want to make some tools or something out of it. So for if 25% of that has to be black bronze, that means I need 400 units of black bronze. So what I did is I put four of the, uh, of the ingots full of liquid uh, black bronze back in while it was still liquid. I, I mean, I could have waited until it was solid and then they would have to heat up and melt again, but I quickly threw them back in as liquid and they drained out. So I got that. So the next thing I want to do is, uh, There we go, is uh, melt down some garnierite to get liquid to get the nickel in. So these will end up being 350. The, these 10 rich ones will give me 350. And then I've got five of the uh, surface nuggets at 10 each to round that out to 400. And then I'm going to need eight steel ingots. Yeah, let's make sure I don't let it get cold this time. Okay, so the same sort of thing is I'll probably accelerate time here yeah, so you don't have to sit around watching it melt. Okay, so apparently to melt down the nickel, we need to go above just two star yellow white. So we're going to have to use the bellows on this. I never knew that. Don't think I've ever run into that before. Yep, there it all goes in. And so we're going to have to do that again. And so we would need to do that anyway on the steel ingots as well. So we're waiting for all that stuff to warm up, actually. There is one other thing we can do. Except I'm doing it in the dark. I know it's always bad to do these things in the dark, but... Now is when I have the time available. So this is when it's going to happen. Oh, and I need those two dirt blocks back as well. I can make things a little bit better by lighting up some of my torches out here. Mm. 
Alright, I've got this sheep who's in the wrong pen. Um Alright, make my make my secondary pen a little bit smaller. Makes things a little tougher, but can't have everything. Next step. Oh, come on. So all the cows now crowd over there? Jesus. Get away, guys. It's the sheep I want over here, not you. Okay. Right, get the sheep over. <sighs> Uncooperative animals. Well, I'm going to try pushing the sheep in there. I'll probably end up with a cow in there instead, but let's see. Let's push the cow out. And now try to push the sheep in. There we go, there we go, and there. Okay. That's the hard part. Versus this is easy. Put in ramp. Grab him on the lead. Bring him over here. And presto. He's back where he belongs. Reason I want him in there is because he hasn't been made. Well, I mean, aside from just t keeping things tidy, you know how I like to keep things tidy. But he hasn't been mated yet, and they can't mate through fences. So I have to get him in there with the uh, with the other unmated female. All right. Let's make sure we still have lots of charcoal in here. Wail away on the bellows for a bit. And the steel's got to get up to brilliant white. Now the other thing that's going to happen, I should clear things out of my inventory again to make room. Is uh, this is going to give us weak steel, weak, weak black steel, I think, will be the thing that we get out of this. And <clears throat> so then we need to weld it with pig iron. So it would be good to be able to throw pig iron on here to get, start getting it heated up. The only thing is I want to be careful it doesn't melt. I mean, it's not, it's not a disaster if it, well, I only have room here for four empty ingots. So maybe I should only heat four up at a time, just in case. I mean, if it melts, it'll go into the ingots, right? But it would be better, since I want to weld it, I want it to be in ingot form. But the steel has a head start, so the steel should hit Brilliant White and melt long before the pig iron gets there. And then, that, then it'll cool back down a bit and we'll be okay. So again, time lapse the melting. Okay, and we can see now it's melted down to give us weak steel. So I'll start drawing those out. Uh, I've got 16 of them coming. Temperature's falling down again. Yeah, so for this stuff, since it's a steel, we have to keep the temperature up at brilliant white so it stays liquid. Yeah, so our pig iron did melt. I forgot that I would have to keep the temperature up while drawing out the uh, metal, so. Oh well, I can always let it harden again. And two more. Yeah, 
one. And two. There we go. Whoops. Not done yet. There we go. So that's all of our weak steel. Now we can let this thing cool off a bit. Let's bring these guys out. Throw another big iron in there. Get him started. And this guy's solid now. And the pig iron is solid. Whoops, wrong place. But funnily enough, the pig iron is not hot enough to weld. So we're going to have to bring it up to welding temperature now. Um, let's get the other pig irons out. The ones that are hot. And actually, let's remove the crucible since it's just going to get in the way now. Does the crucible fit in the chest? No, it does not. So, yeah, that's why I had it over here before. Duh. Okay. And that's up to can weld, can weld. Let's get this out of the way and that out of the way. Hang on. That's not the one that I can weld. That is the one I can weld. Now we come over here. And come on. And we finally have a first high carbon black steel. And then we have to hammer away at it to get the car extra carbon out. And there we go, our first black steel ingot. Ooh, I get another TV for it. And so we're gonna have to repeat that multiple times, of course. So I won't make you sit through all that. And uh, cause from this point on, it's fairly straightforward as I just keep repeating that process until I've got uh, 14 black steel ingots, and then I combine them into seven double ingots. And then of those I can make, finally make the black steel anvil. So I'll meet you back when that's ready. Okay, I have my seven black steel ingots and make the usual eye shape for the anvil. You've seen it before, but this is in a different color. And come over here, it's time to say goodbye, I think, to our bronze anvil. We're not gonna be needing it. I might store it somewhere as an emergency anvil or something like that. And there we go. Uh, dark. Dark anvil. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to need to make another hammer to go on that anvil. And I have a couple of black steel ingots left over in case I want to make something out of them. Um, these are these are weak black steel, I think. Or no, these are just regular steel, right. So I have a couple of regular steel ingots, and then this is all pig iron over here. So we've made it to black steel, which is the second to last on the last tier of the uh, of the metals in the game uh, with the top two as I mentioned before being red steel and blue steel so I'll probably tackle red steel next episode and get me my get get me my yeah my English teacher would be so proud and uh, get us a red steel bucket so that I can finally replenish my little eternal <laughs> quote eternal unquote pool here although then i'll have to figure out what to do with these things find a place for them somewhere okay well i hope you enjoyed the episode and i hope to see you back for the next one